Hello everyone, I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. Two teams will need their quarterbacks to step up and lead their offenses on the gridiron today. It's Dalton's Bengals going up against Rodgers Packers. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth. So we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. This place first opened way back in 1957. We are inside legendary Lambeau Field here in Green Bay. We all know this community lives for its Packers, and the green and gold came out of the tunnel a short time ago, and it was loud. We are ready for football. So are they as the Packers get set to match up with the Cincinnati Bengals. Hi again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn, and you know now more than ever, it's a passing league. We know that, and as Larry hit onto the open, we've got a couple of great passers squaring off here this afternoon. And usually the discussion centers in on how they're going to compete against the opposite defense. But you and I had a nice little chat with one of these guys in this <laughs> game, and they did say, look, I'm always competing against the opposite quarterback. If I play better than he does, I think my team has an advantage. Makes the handshake afterwards a little sweeter, too. Set to return. This is Jeff Janis. And he'll take it out past the 25 to the 26-yard line. So here comes the Packers offense now onto the field. You get a look at the Pro Bowl quarterback in his 13th season now out of Cal, Aaron Rodgers. Okay, let's get the numbers out of the way quickly with him. Over 4,400 yards passing in 2016. His sixth year of more than 4,000 yards. That broke the Packer record of five years set by one Brett Favre. But the best part is his improv. On any given play, Aaron Rodgers can create something out of nothing. He is phenomenal. A first carry here for Ty Montgomery. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. I think many people thought Ty Montgomery would automatically go back to being a wide receiver this year. But it appears he's going to stay at running back. I know they drafted Jamal Williams from BYU, but Montgomery proving his worth. And he proved it, yeah, proved it last year. 5.4 yards per carry, fourth best in the league. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Pretty shifty footwork, but didn't buy him much. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. And a wide receiver to watch in this offense, certainly Jordy Nelson. And most defenses watch him run past them. Jordy Nelson can run every route in the route tree and take it to the house. An early test. Two plays in. This is third and two. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And he's got Bennett. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. The Packer first. Rodgers to his new target, Bennett. Have you gotten used to seeing Martellus Bennett at number 80? I mean, he's been number 88 his entire career, right? And how about that? The fans selecting his jersey number. Yeah, that was his idea. He put that out there on social media and said, here, here are a few choices. What should I wear? And he went with what the fans picked. Over 100,000 people weighed in. down here's the run with Montgomery and a good burst there gets him seven up to midfield well, that run right there was an offensive line coach's dream wasn't it guys picked up all their assignments created a nice gap for the running back to get through pick up seven yards yeah he's probably chortling on the headset right now saying we got it going boys let's keep it going And they're not 
going to get a playoff here as time will expire on this first quarter. Can't wait to see what the second quarter has in store. We're back to Lambeau in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Packers in possession of the football. They're looking at a second and short yardage to start things out. Stopped up at about the 47 yard line. A three yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. Now Rodgers finds his target, Montgomery. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Working from the gun, Rodgers. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Out routes are always timing routes. And if the timing's off just a little bit, it can really throw off a play. It looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second because he caught it, just couldn't stay in bounds. Rodgers will try again on second down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The new acquisition, Martellus Bennett, the intended target. And that'll make it third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. And now the Bengal defense here calling a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Now on to kick it away, the rookie from Miami, Justin Vogel. Back deep for the Bengals, Adam Jones. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Here come the Bengals now to take over. They'll be let out by the former Texas Christian University Horn Frog, Andy Dalton. And remember, he was a day one starter his rookie year, and that was the year of the lockout. So he didn't even get the OTAs and minicamp that led into it, led his team to the playoffs that year, led his team to the playoffs his first five years in the league before a 6-9-1 record in 2016. and 10. Over the middle, that's caught by Ross. And they'll get him down here at the 23. The completion good for three, and it's second down. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him onto the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Dalton 
Throwing on second down. And he's got the hook up to Brandon LaFell. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Now the offense lining up first and 10. Dalton here from the gun. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Second down here after the incomplete pass. The play fake to Hill, Dalton. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. As if he didn't have enough to think about on that route, the comeback route, coming back to the football and catching it, decided to make sure he toe-tapped and kept himself in bounds. And that was spectacular, but on the comeback route, maybe a little easier to deal with the sideline since you, you've got better vision of it? I think that's a great point because you should know exactly where you're going and know how much space you have and make sure you get your feet down. But yeah, coming back to the football, I like it. Good vision. Dalton to Hill on the draw. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. And this will be spotted on the other side of the field. It's a 61-yard attempt. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. And this is one of the risks you run when you attempt a long field goal. If you miss, the defense takes over the spot of the placement. So now they've got a chance to get one more drive in before halftime. for what will likely be the last play of the first half. Check girls, check girls, check girls. 319. A final shot before half for Rodgers. And incomplete on the deep ball. So we've hit halftime here in what obviously is a very fast-moving first half of play. 
As we'll send you down to Orlando where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Okay, Brandon, thanks. And welcome, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get to the highlights. Defense has been the name of the game. It's not often you see a matchup where both sides can't find a way to get on the scoreboard. We'll have to see if the offense picks up in the second half. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Packers opening drive. Michael Johnson is going to get to the quarterback for the sack. This will go for a loss of eight. Bengals on second and seven. Dalton's got the completion here, and he'll be tackled at their own 39-yard line. Bengals would later attempt a field goal that would miss the mark. So that'll do it from here in Orlando. No points in this one yet, but we'll hand it back over to a man who's always on point. That's Brandon Gott. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. On the return, it's Alex Erickson. <laughs> the Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. There are zero points on the scoreboard for either side. It'll be interesting to see what adjustments were made. The defenses have obviously been great. So if you like defense, this is a classic game. This is what you're looking for. But now you're trying to figure out how to gain any type of an advantage on offense. Is it through a big chunk play that they haven't seen before? Or is it just running your regular offense and running it better, trying to create an opportunity? We'll see which avenue they choose to go down. On first and ten, here's Andy Dalton. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Nice completion there for Andy Dalton. Uh, Charles, you worked some of his games when he was at TCU. Now you've worked his games in the NFL. What progression have you seen? I've seen a guy who took over as a freshman in college and got better and better each year. Always added a little bit more to his game, got stronger. But the best part about him is he's always been accurate. Fresh set of downs here. Now Dalton brought in here by Tyler Eifert. A gain of six there on first. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Final minute now of the third quarter. <laughs> on second down, Hill. And some room to roam now. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. Give them 17 at a Cincinnati first down. And that's a good sign right there as we start the third quarter. Because in the first half, not much space to run the football. And as we go into the half, we often think to ourselves, all right, what's the adjustment? What do they have to do? You know what a lot of the adjustments are? No adjustments. You know the game plan, been working on it all week. Maybe a little tweak here or there, a little bit better blocking. And now you're establishing the running game. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Again, it's Hill. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Now that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. 
and they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. And they won't be able to run another play. Time has expired on this third quarter. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Lambeau as we are set to bring you the home stretch here, the fourth quarter. Second down, nine yards to go. Play action here with Dalton. Over the middle complete. That's Ross. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. This defense needs a big play in the worst way because so far, they're not putting up much of a fight. If they don't get a stop here soon, this game could be over for them. down carry it's Hill and he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field so let's see about the call holding offense so on the big tight end holding each and every year we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college so it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. Following the penalty, it's Hill. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. And now a timeout coming from the defensive side for the Packers. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Again, they run with Hill. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. And Alan Packer's going to take another timeout. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Now a first carry from Giovanni Bernard. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup and get set as we resume action.
So now Randy Bullock with an important field goal try here. This for the lead in the final stages. And Bullock will put this one through. And with a little over a minute to play, they have taken the lead. So it took a while to get something, anything, on the scoreboard, but we finally have our first points of the contest. And now this becomes a question of can they make this stand up? The defense has been impeccable thus far, and now they need to go out and finish strong. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. They're only in need of a field goal, a decent amount of time on the clock. So tell me if I'm wrong. You don't have to be too panicked here. No, not at all. I agree with you. And this is where your preparation and your confidence comes into play. They've worked on these situations. Yeah, they practice this all the time. They practice it all the time. They know what they want to get done. And in a lot of cases, the great competitors, they love this situation. They think they can go ahead and get it done. They practiced it. We'll see if practice makes perfect. Now Rodgers. He's going to dump that off to his running back, Montgomery. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. It's a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it a second down. Back to throw, Rodgers. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Rodgers to throw. He'll leave it for Montgomery complete. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. That good for 22 and a first down. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Gain of 21 yards. And now down to 14 as he spikes it to stop the clock. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. And now the Bengal defense here calling a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to potentially send us to overtime. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. 
So this hasn't exactly been a battle of one touchdown after another, but at 3-3 now here in the fourth, it's been a pretty doggone entertaining game. Yeah, it's kind of like a pitcher's duel in baseball, don't you think? The aficionados can appreciate a tightly fought game like this. Yeah, but the fantasy players, not so much. to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. This will be fielded at the six. Solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. In a moment, this is the NFL on EA Sports. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This one taken from the seven. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Their D gets the INT. Now what can Dalton do? And the grab by Croft. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Here we go with second and seven. Out of the gun, it's Dalton. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. What will they draw up to try to keep this opening drive of overtime moving? Third and seven. Fakes the give to Bernard. Dalton. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. 
The temptation to go for it probably there. Always is, especially in overtime. Got to punt it, though. I think you're right. I think that you absolutely have to punt it away and trust your defense, especially play a little field position here. But you're so right about the temptation. Another way to satisfy that, though, line up in punt formation and fake it. That's another way to get it done. Punting now is Huber as he sends it away. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it. But they turned it back over to them, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? Yeah, part one is done. Now part two. To Montgomery to begin the drive. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. And welcome back. The offensive unit, they took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. See if they stay on the ground for second down. What can Rodgers do now with his drive? And complete on the right side to Bennett. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. That one goes for 24 yards. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen, but everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they showed to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there. Second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. play Rodgers to Montgomery a swift move but not a ton to show for it tackle just on the other side of midfield four yards on the pick up there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven well, if you're a football guy that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there obviously a guy carrying the ball but how about the people up front leverage athleticism they created some nice space for him To throw on third down. Rodgers. 
He's got Adams on the hookup. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Rodgers fighting Adams for a Packer first. When you're trying to win a game in overtime, I don't know that there's too many more in the history of the game you want under center than Aaron Rodgers. Well, I think a lot of it's because he can beat you so many different ways. All right? He can beat you with a big shot downfield. Heck, if you need a Hail Mary, no one throws it better than Aaron Rodgers. But just when you think you've got him corralled in, when you've got pressure on him, he uses his legs to escape and create another big play, whether he's running it or extending it so a receiver gets open. I think he embraces overtime, and he embraces the spotlight that comes with it. Trying to lay one up deep, and this one is incomplete. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. To throw is Rodgers. To throw again. Caught on the right side by Adams. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. The Packers on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and eight. Rodgers to throw once more. Oh, so close, but incomplete. Could have been a big turnover in overtime if he'd held on. Instead, though, it's fourth down. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now, he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. So a big spot now for Crosby, but he's been here before. And now the Bengals are going to call another timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. From the right hash, this from 53. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. And that changes everything here in OT. Well, when you get that ball in OT, that's not the chance you envision. And the long field goal attempt here winds up lacking. And you don't want to hang too much of this on your kicker, but he's going to leave you in a tough spot as well because you give your opponents excellent field position to start their first drive.
play fake here on first down. Oh, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Devon House. So we will see yet another drive in this overtime. For whatever reason, neither team able to finish this game off. I know that the first thought is, does anyone really want to win it? But I think that they both desperately want to win it, and sometimes you force things, and that leads to errors. Well, it's out there for the taking. We'll see who can do it. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. Rodgers lets it go for Nelson it's incomplete took a shot couldn't connect So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Rodgers throwing again. Under pressure here, and down he goes. Shaq back at about the 43-yard line. Kevin Minter in from his linebacker spot. He's able to drop him for a loss of about 10. He didn't get rid of the football there, took the sack, although that's easier said than done. He can't just chuck the thing sideways into the seats. No, he really can't because you're not afforded total protection as a quarterback. You have to get outside of the tackle boxes as defined by the NFL, meaning wherever your tackles operate normally, get outside of that. And the ball that you throw has to get back to at least the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, you face an intentional grounding call. Rodgers now, after the sack, he'll lead the pack up on third and long. A play fake to Montgomery. Now Rodgers going up top. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. now is the Packers punter on for a very important punt here in overtime he gets this one away and boy it's another boomer and this one hits at the one continues on into the end zone for a touchback Cincinnati now ready to take the field and last time wasn't pretty one play and an interception we'll see if they can do better I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. <laughs> see what happens. Six, six, 
They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He's got a man complete. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaughan alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. Seconds of this overtime as we could be set up at long last for a potential game winner. So the offensive unit called the TO, and now we are ready to resume play. So it all comes down here to the right foot of Randy Bullock. This to win it in overtime. Now the timeout comes here. In the waning seconds of this overtime as we could be set up at long last for a potential game winner. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. So it all comes down here to the right foot of Randy Bullock. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. We were just treated to an absolute dandy in this one. A great finish in overtime with a long field goal. Everybody, including us, on the edge of their seats. Quite a game. And it's rare that you get a game into overtime that it doesn't turn out to be a dandy, right? That's what we saw here. And just what you were talking about, a long field goal to win it. So definitely not a gimme. So there was tension all the way through until the ball went through the post. But it did go through the post. Ice water was in his veins. Thank <laughs> you.